YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today I am in my basement filming a little video for you guys on some of the tips and tricks that I have used to build my sumo stance deadlift. When I first started off doing sumo stance deadlift, I wish I had these tips to help me build a more efficient deadlift. Um, I'm pretty much gonna take you through everything that I do from head to toe that has allowed me to propel my max through the roof. So starting off for me, the first thing that I'll do when I get to the gym before deadlifting is stretching. I will do some hip uh, mobility work internally and external rotations. This will allow me to bring my hips closer to the bar and allow my upper body to get in a more straight up position to turn the entire deadlift into a leg press pretty much. And, and that is the name of the game here. You want to be able to wedge your hips in and get into an upright position to allow just the quads to do one simple lockout and you're done make it so efficient. And today I'm going to share some tips and tricks that has allowed me to do that today. So some of the first stretches that I will do are primarily focusing on hamstring and quad to get the legs activated. And then I will move into some hip mobility work. Um, I'll do straight legged hamstrings stretch, which is pretty much 90 degree angle and just really stretch the SI and the hamstrings. Next, I'll do a butterfly stretch dynamic butterfly stretch, start loosening the hips a little bit. I will then move into my internal hip rotation. Pretty much just one leg over, pull the knee over the opposite leg, really stretch the IT band, do that for both legs. And then I will get into position like this, open up my external rotation and start stretching the adductors. After these more static stretches, I will hop on the adductor machine and abductor machine and do my internal and external hip rotation here. And then one stretch that I found really helpful is this. So I will get into a sumo stance here with the kettlebell and act as if the kettlebell was the barbell, right? And I will sink in there, feel it in my hips where I want my hip position to be. And then I just start acting as if I was performing the movement. This will help start activating all of the muscles around your hips and start activating your leg muscles and your back to start properly executing the lift when you start getting under the barbell. First, starting with the feet, you need the proper shoes. I highly recommend you using as flat of a foot shoe as possible and one that doesn't have a big sole chunk. You know, you don't wanna be deadlifting with Air Force Ones that have like a one inch thickness on the bottom of them because then you're putting yourself in a deficit and you're not able to use the leverages that you have to the fullest. I recommend something like this. These are barefoot shoes. They're flat footed, super grippy. Look at that. You can, I don't even know if you can see, but it's like five millimeters. You know, it's tiny. This is a tiny thickness. Pretty much allows me to get as low as to the floor as possible and allowing me to wedge my hips even better. So I highly recommend a shoe like that. I don't wanna see you guys deadlifting in Air Force Ones or Michael Jordan 3s with you know one inch thickness. That's just not good. All right, now that you got your proper shoes on, the first thing that I do in any movement is foot place. Foot placement is very crucial in the deadlift. It requires you to be very symmetrical and it pretty much determines your stability throughout the movement and how much you could utilize every muscle in your body. If your foot placement is too close, you might not activate your legs as much. If it's too far away, you might not be strong enough to support it at the hip. So you gotta find a good balance on foot positioning. What I recommend is finding a position where your feet are there, they're set. Your toe angle is important too. So you wanna find a foot position where it's wide enough and allows you to Keep your shins perpendicular to the floor with a good toe angle. So what I do is toe angle is pretty much in line with my leg here. My quad, it's in line. Both sides I check. I feel stable on both sides. I'm not far out on one side, close on the other. Find a very symmetric stance. Come down where your hips are gonna be at when you start lifting the weight off the ground and keep them there. What I like to do is kind of cup my feet underneath the bar because this will force my knees to stay out in the deadlift when I'm pulling up rather than in, right? So that is very important too. 
Once you have your feet set, the next thing to think about is your knees. So you're set up here. You want to keep your knees out, right? So that's why stretching is very important to get that external rotation. You might not build that right away, but over time, I promise you, you will. Just keep practicing. When you start lifting off the ground, you don't want to go in. See that? You don't want to go in. Then your hips rise, and then it's more of a lockout with the knees. And then the back, you want it to be simultaneous. And the only way to do that is to keep your knees out. What I like to do is when I'm pulling off the ground, I spread, I pretend like I'm spreading the floor, right? So the floor split, two separate pieces right here. You want to force your toes and feet out. So you're forcing out, you're forcing out, but you feel like you're pulling up. You don't want to, just force out very slightly, get a feel for it. Once you have that, start pulling your knees out. Look at that. These are out, they don't come in. That's why I recommend slightly cupping underneath the bar, just slightly. So the bar is pretty much right through the middle of my foot, more close to my ankle. Cup it, a little baby cup, you wanna just cup it. You put in water, you wanna cup it. You cup it, spread the floor, knees out, and boom. So now that you have the feet set, knees are out, the next thing is the hips. The hips are a big dictator of how efficient you are in the deadlift. Now, the easiest way to explain this is you don't want to be in a squat position when you first start pulling. You don't want to have your hips too risen because then it's all more like an RDL. So the best way to do that is look in the mirror and then you pull and see where your hips stop rising. And that's where I want you to have a consistent hip placement. Every time you'll figure it out once you get more of a feel, but I highly recommend finding a position that's in between a squat and an RDL, somewhere nice and right in the middle. The two parts of the deadlift that are most heavily you need to be focused on are how well you can wedge your hips in and how well you can pull back with your upper back. So once you're wedging, you're wedged there, now you need some strength to get into an upright position and that's gonna be your upper back. So that's what I'm gonna give you some tips on right now. What I like to do is I'll stand straight and I'll throw my arms all the way down. I'll try to touch my kneecaps with my hands and that's how I should feel my shoulders sitting when I'm going through the movement. I want my triceps to be hugging my lats and forming like, like I'm a freaking brick house, right? I just want to pull back. I want to try to force my hands back into my back pockets. Mm, it should be pretty hard because your lats are blocking and running into your triceps, so it should be pretty hard. That's how you're going to pull back in the movement on deadlift for your sumo stance as you're wedging your hips in. A big problem that I see people having is they round too much with their upper back. You know, they look like they have some scoliosis going on or they're trying to stay super neutral position and honestly, those are both wrong. You want your mid back and lower back to be neutral, but you could have some upper back rounded. So throw the hands down, drop in the shoulders slightly in front of me, activating the lats and throwing my hands into my back pocket. That's how your upper back is gonna be more efficient in the deadlift. So talking about grip now, I used to do over under grip when I first started out and it was I was finding some imbalance you know, it was falling sideways at the top and it just wasn't really working for me. I forced myself to do over, over hook grip and honestly, it's allowed me to increase my deadlift astronomical um, simply just by switching my grip. So find a grip that works for you and stick with it and train hard. Right, so now that we have our feet set, our knees are going out, hips are coming in at a consistent placement, wedging perfectly, pulling back with your upper back, staying tight, now it's for the bracing. Now you got to put a belt on, right? Now what you want to envision is you want to take a big breath as soon as you're right about a pull. You don't want to take a big brace and start wasting energy by holding it too long and vice versa. You want to be as efficient as possible. So you want to brace out into your belt, right? And what I like to do is, you know, I'm set up here, get everything set up. Feel it for my grip, okay, everything feels good. 
and then big brace. Bam! You just want to brace as soon as you're starting to pull, but not during your pulling, but right before. And you want to get into as big of a pressure buildup as you possibly can because that's going to allow you to keep your mid and lower back neutral. And that's honestly why you're allowed to round your upper back. All right, so now that we have all of our mental cues, we're gonna put everything together right now and do the CMO deadlift. So first thing you do, set the feet evenly, shins are perpendicular, okay, cup it under, toe angle looks good. All right, hips look about set here. Again, wide here. Sometimes I'll like even like press my knees out a little, okay? Feels good, adductors feel good. Get loose, vision and vision, okay. Grip's good, it's shoulder width apart. Grip feels good, hook grip, okay. Now, extend, patience. You wanna be very patient going into the deadlift, okay. It's not like conventional where it's grip and rip. You wanna be as patient as possible, right? Patience is gonna help create a more consistent hip position and allow you to wedge more efficiently. So you're gonna be here, Feel, 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 feel these out. Feel it, feel it. Okay, hips good. Now pull back with the upper back. And then, bam. A little side angle here so you can see what I mean by the upper back roundness. And then mid and lower back neutral. So you're gonna brace. It's gonna keep your lower back and mid back neutral. Upper back's rounded slightly. You can see the shoulders are over the midline just a little bit, but it's okay because you're pulling back. As long as you pull back, your upper back will be fine. Pull back, you get some roundage going, bam. Now, I wouldn't be too caught up if you couldn't really get this the first try. Um, there's a lot to take in, a lot to do. It's stuff that I've been working on for two plus years now, but it does help and it does work. And if you work on it little by little, everything will grow into a bigger, more efficient deadlift. A couple key notes. If you are locking your knees out before your upper back and shoulders are locked, that means your upper back is weak and you're not really pulling. So then I would incorporate movements like bellless RDLs, Penley rows, barbell rows, and yeah, so. With that being said, that is the conclusion of this deadlift tutorial video. Um, if you guys like videos like this, I could try and do more for like squat and bench or even do like a, another tutorial for deadlift that's something a little more specific. Um, let me know if any of these tips and cues have helped you. Um, these are just stuff that I share towards people um, all the time, but it's over text and it's really not easy to have them understand when it's just over text rather than in person. So that's why I made this video. This video hopefully encompasses everything that I do in my deadlift that I hope you guys can take away and use yourself. Yeah, so like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.